Eric Banner is on the show tonight. Here he is. Now, Eric, you're joining us from Melbourne, Australia. How are things there? Do, do things feel like they're close to normal? What's the mask wearing sit you out there? Look, it's, it's, uh, it's pretty normal here at the moment, mate. Uh, you have to wear a mask if you're on public transport, but, you know, we can go to the football and yell and scream at each other and do all the things that we love to do as, as Australians. So it's, it's pretty good. It's pretty good here. It was a bit rough last year in Melbourne, but uh, right now it's, it's excellent. Yeah, I've got some, some family in Melbourne, and, and when I was talking to them, uh, they, were, they were saying that the lockdown was, was incredibly strict for, for around about five months. What, we, what sort of stuff were you doing to, to pass the time? Well, I'm sure you know this about me, James, but I, I'm pretty rock and roll. Oh, right? yeah. I'm pretty rock and roll. Oh, yeah, um, you can see so... by how well, well organised those shelves are behind you. You are a rock and roll dude. I, I am. And, and so my wife and I, to answer your question, we just basically mainlined uh, British Bake Off oh. and Landscape and Portrait Artist of the Year. I mean, it's pretty rock and roll, right? That's the dream. That's, I think that's what everybody did during... We were either baking or watching other people bake. That was basically <laughs> it. Now, I don't know, I, don't know, I wasn't 100% sure of this. You were, you were a stand-up comedian for a couple of years before you got your television break. Is this something... Would you ever go back to stand-up in any way, Eric? Well, I don't think I have a choice, James, because um, every time I've kind of, like, just mentioned it in passing to my adult children who are grown up, um, they really have the, 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 the widest look of fear in their eyes that I've ever seen. Really? No, no haunted story I could ever have told them as a child instills more fear than the thought of Dad going back to stand-up. I think they would have me in a straitjacket if, uh, if I declared that I was on my way to a gig. So the answer is no. Do they always show an interest in what sort of projects you're doing and things? Intense amount of interest. I'm either at home or I'm not at home. It's right. as simple as that. And that's it. And they, only, they it. would that's, only that's... intervene if it was stand-up comedy. Yeah, no, no, seriously, they, they would wrestle, wrestle me to the ground. I would not be allowed to leave the house if, um, <laughs> if they thought I was on my way to a gig. I don't know why. I mean, it's maybe because, you know, their whole life I've just been an actor and they never knew Dad as a stand-up, so it's, uh, it's just scary. Yeah. I think this is something they'd absolutely love you to t surprise them with, like on a, on a landmark birthday. Just a 10 minute Like on a 21st, set. A, <laughs> yeah. a tight 30 minutes in front of all their friends. Oh. James, we're on to something. The greatest gift something. you can ever give a child. Uh, <laughs> now, let's talk about your new movie, The Dry, which has been the, the biggest hit in Australia. And I'm so happy for you that it's, it's been so well received. For anyone who doesn't know, tell us what it's about and who you play. So I play a detective who has left his country town as, as, a, as a young man for reasons that, that we're not quite sure of to return for the funeral of my best friend. And when I arrive, we discover that I'm not at all welcome and we spend the film understanding the reason for that. And it's basically a whodunit, but it's set in a tiny little country town in, in Australia called Kiawara. It's based on Jane Harper's best-selling book, The Dry, and it's basically... a a whodunit, so the audience has, has plenty of work to do, and I, but I tell you, they're going to feel like they've spent a couple of hours in a little country Australian town by the end of it, that's for sure. What sort of... Uh, have you been surprised by the incredible reaction to the movie? Yeah, look, the film turned into, as you say, a, a monster hit here in Australia, and we, we, we really wanted the film to work here. We felt like the best chance we had of the film working overseas was working really well here first, so we really concentrated on the Australian release, and... Um, the public just went went bananas for it. So we're, we're beside ourselves. We're really thrilled. It's not every day your films are hit straight away. Sometimes it takes a bit of time. And so, no, we're, we're thrilled. And we're really super excited about American audiences experiencing it. Well, I'm excited to see it, firstly, for the story, but also, you know, the fact that it was shot in this tiny town out in the, in the outback. What's it like filming out there? I don't imagine they're used to big film crews turning up. Do, do the locals pitch in to help and stuff like that? They were amazing. We were based in a, in a town called Warwick Nabil, which, which didn't have a whole lot of accommodation infrastructure to support, even, even like a small crew at the time. So um, we made friends with a local publican, as you know, which is the owner of the, the, the local pub, and he basically sorted out the accommodation by just telling people at the bar where they were going to be sleeping, like, Gary, you're moving back in with Mum. 
Roger, you're moving in with Phil. Like, he just basically sorted the whole town out and made all these houses available for us so that we could actually live and stay there. It was unbelievable. Oh, that's fantastic.